What is up? It's Leon from Sofia here in the new apartment. Just want to do a quick vlog. Just uh, what I want to discuss today is basically my past in the Netherlands and a bit more about being uh, bullied there, or at least uh, scrutinized, not being myself for basically uh, way too long. So as you might all know, I was born in the Netherlands, lived there for 20 something years, 21, 22. What was it like? You know, family wise, very good. No complaints there, don't get me wrong. But in terms of public life and school, I didn't enjoy it at all. Like where to start, there was just a whole lot of bullying as some of my followers might know I'm gay and I basically came out when I was 21, 20 I believe uh, before that I had uh, I'd had two girlfriends in the Netherlands but it was when I was basically 17, 18 but that was not too serious either so I guess most people if not everyone knew that I was gay but no matter what I was also considered to be the uh, the ugly kid like I looked quite different from the way I look now I just a whole lot narrow narrower face was really like the kid that got picked upon and always considered the ugliest guy in the class except for one person uh, whose name I'm not gonna mention now let's call him Steve but he had even wider ears and was let's say a bit more socially awkward if that's the right word so it was when I was in the class with him it was him who was the ugliest and the most bullied upon from the guys and I was like the second second tier ugly uh, at least it's what people said so let's just start with elementary school for example i was in class with you know this guy as well and how it went uh, i remember people saying like who would you rather have sex with like just um, openly when i when we were there they were saying would you rather have sex with uh, steve or with leon and people would say yeah uh, none of either because I would rather kill myself or some people would say well then I would choose Leon but basically we were considered like the the tools of the whole class for several years because you tend to stick with the same people so I was always quite excluded even in elementary school when things are supposed to be a lot more fun you would think kids are more inclusive you know was not really the case in my um, experience when I was in elementary school there were a lot of parties let's say get-togethers people would go to the pool for their birthdays these things were like organized by the parents but obviously the kids they would get to choose whom is invited or whom is not and I was never one of the cool kids I was always the excluded one uh, no matter how hard I tried to be a part of a group so I remember this one time we had uh, like a public pool in our town and like uh, a girl from my class she was organizing a, like a kids party I think we were 10, 8, 7 even I don't know uh, years old don't remember but uh, I knew about a party, I was not invited. Like she and the cool kids would all go swim for a day. It was a beautiful summer day and I was not invited so I was basically at home. And I decided to just go to the pool, uh, buy a ticket from my money that I had very little of. Just got like pocket money once a week. I decided to go by myself and perhaps I could just tag along, you know. So then I came and I was looking for them at the pool walked outside because 
we had a pool outside there as well. And then the girl who organized the party came up to me and she said, you should just go away because you're not invited. And also you will never ever find a girlfriend because you're ugly or whatever, something like that. And I just said, okay, I'll go. So I didn't even stay in the pool. I just went straight home. Uh, that's that. A lot of these things happened like every day or every day. Plenty of times uh, this sort of thing happened. I remember going by bike to the city center, my city, and I parked my bike like in the shopping street and it was a quiet day, there was no wind, no storm, nothing. That means that my hearing was very good. And I w as I was locking my bike, I suddenly heard from far away, let's say 10, 20 meters, I heard someone say, God, you are ugly as fuck. And I heard it, so I looked up and I looked straight in a woman's face. And she was a cashier in a clothing store, let's say in a fashion boutique. And she looked at me, so she was talking about me. And she didn't expect me to hear it because I was quite far away. But I, I caught it because there was no wind. So I just looked up, made eye contact. She saw that I had heard her and she did. Because <gasps> she was talking to a colleague about me, let's say. She made this remark about just me as a random passerby. She said, God, you're ugly as fuck. To a kid. I was a young kid. Like, uh, not something fun to hear. I just looked up. She did this. And I just walked off because what would I do? I was like, she was like 28, I don't know, whatever. I was maybe seven, 10, don't know. Another time um, in school, we had, oh, there was a lot of bullying. People threw my backpack in the trash. People threw my books. They always called me a faggot, whatever. Even with the sex ad class, they tried to pull me out of the closet to admit I was gay because it would, they could see it about me or something, something like that. Um, when I would walk in the school square, things would happen like, uh, like when I was walking in the, the school square alone, let's say in the afternoon, uh, someone would yell from the corner of the square like, hey, faggot! And I would just look like, because I heard someone yell, no matter what it was. Even if someone had just yelled, hello, I would have looked up. And then I looked and they said, yes, yeah, you're gay because you looked when we called you gay. So it was like that. It went on and on and on. I had like acne, like every other teenager, but I got bullied heavily for it just because the whole picture, me, they bullied me for my ears so much. Um, the whole picture, people despised me as a person. I was like a subhuman to my classmates. Uh, and that's to most of them. Like I had some friends, but they would eventually be part of the cool kids as well. And just forget about me because they didn't want to ruin their reputation. Like, I was always the third wheel, let's say. So because of the acne, my mom, she bought me like some powder, or at least, uh, oh, pardon me, just a sec. So my mom, she bought me like a facial powder uh, to put on the spots on the acne, like it would tend to be pretty red and would just make me look worse, uh, the acne. So I put some and then it looked better. I felt more confident. So I decided to start making some friends and eventually I was like half half part of it like trying to prove myself like some sort of circus animal trying to be cool and some girl she would look in my face like closely and said are you wearing makeup and then she started like faggot faggot you're gay I knew it and people would just yell at me and I would just walk off 
So basically for years on end, I think two, three years, I spent all my lunch breaks alone because I had zero friends. That would mean that I had like a sandwich from home and I would just walk around the school alone, like the only person who was alone, just walk in circles along the square. Sometimes I get pushed, sometimes I would pull my necklace that I got from my, my parents and all of the uh, little things, they would roll all over the ground, like the little balls on my necklace, you know. Uh, so they would just destroy everything. Uh, there were certain parts of the school I couldn't go with the bigger guys because they would try to prove themselves by, by pulling my bag off or something, just pushing me really hard. And uh, this sort of thing, you know, all the time. Or I would even walk outside of the school terrain, just with a sandwich through the area, would just walk there until the break was over because I had nobody to hang out with. And that was for years on end in, in high school. Uh, we also have like a yearly festival in my town, which is called Apple Pop. It's a sort of where we have a lot of pop artists that come. It's one of the biggest free open air festivals in the country. It's pretty cool actually, but I obviously I had no one to go with. So I would tend to either go with someone and then just lose them. Or I would go alone and end up kind of alone there as well. And at one point I was with some half friends, I would say. They were not even friends, like acquaintances from school. One of them had a marker and they started to write things in people's neck. So eventually he started writing something in my neck without asking me. But I thought, I was very afraid. I thought, yeah, I want to be cool, want to be liked. I'll just let you write in my neck. So what he wrote basically was homo, like with big letters. And then people started yelling like, homo, homo, homo. And eventually they started pushing me. And that was also not my friends, but people in the crowd. They started pushing me. Everybody yelled at me, homo, homo. And they pushed me, pushed me away. Eventually I got outside of the crowd. So eventually I walked to my bike crying and I cycled to my aunt because we had a sort of family gathering there as well. And I remember standing outside her house and I thought, yeah, I can't tell her about it. I can't tell anyone about it because they'll think I'm gay. They will despise me, I'm not gay, and I don't want to talk about it. Um, so just dried off my tears, walked in, that's it. Never talked about these things with anyone. And I remember sitting there like, why me? Why do people treat me like this? And I didn't deserve it. Like, I've never done bad upon anyone. Like, I'm pretty pleasant to be around, even back then. I was... Not a cool kid, but I was a fine kid, just fine, well raised, whatever. But nobody picked up the signs that I was being bullied. I'm pretty smart, I guess, so I can easily suppress things in that regard. I can easily pretend that I'm fine because on the grand scale of things I would always like think that oh i don't matter in that way nobody would listen um, so nobody also picked up on it i didn't discuss it with my parents either or people would just say oh it's not a big deal we'll make you tougher you know but it went on and on uh, eventually later in high school when i was let's say 18 to 20 I had friends as well, I had some girlfriends, then my reputation started to improve because I dressed better. Uh, the girls basically liked me, but still always people thought I was gay, which I was. But I, you know, I could be with a girl, but I found later that really I don't want to do it as my life basis, you know. I'm pretty much gay, so... Even though I can, it would be against my my preference. So I wasn't sure back then, perhaps I even used it as a way to 
to prove that I wasn't gay, but I wasn't sure. I was on the on the fence, let's say. So eventually, uh, broke it off with the girls. Uh, came out of the closet when I was I don't know, even when I was in university uh, that was. But before I came out, another thing is that I was doing an internship and I'm very polite, like I wasn't truly myself because it was in the closet, but I'm polite to everyone, to women, to men, doesn't matter. So when I would work in this office, I would hold the door for ladies just because I thought it's the right thing to do. I would pour them some tea now and then make like a drink because I drank a lot of coffee and thought might as well give them a round of tea to the ladies. Sometimes I said, oh, you have nice glasses, you have a nice skirt, whatever, but there was no bad intent. I meant it just to make small talk. Uh, what happened then? The girls, they thought I wanted something from them. The ladies in the professional work environment, which I didn't because they were honestly not that attractive and I didn't really like women in the first place so they started to gather like against me to rally against me amongst each other instead of talking to me they would go behind my back to the boss and spiral against me to get me out of this company uh, after the internship my boss was gay he didn't know I was gay but the boss decided to offer me a permanent contract because he liked my work. My work was very good. So he gave me a, a chance, whereas the colleagues, they didn't want me in the company. So they started to, behind my back, to this boss, started to, you know, stand up against me. Even though nobody ever talked to me about my behavior. And all I did was hold doors, was being polite, that's it. Perhaps I was a bit awkward, but I was very young. I'd been bullied tremendously. I didn't know how to behave. I was damaged goods. Nobody helped me. Nobody talked to me. But my work was good, so I got a position. But then eventually I intercepted an email that was sent about me. I was working in the company for a year then. And I'd already come out of the closet, so my colleagues knew. And then suddenly they were fine with me. Mysteriously. Mysteriously, they were fine with me uh, because they knew I was gay and I was not a threat, basically. Uh, so, um, but I intercepted an older email that was before I came out of the closet when I was still my internship there, before the permanent position. How I intercepted it doesn't matter. I'm not going to go into details. I basically uh, accidentally got to read this email. Did hack anything? I accidentally was not there intention for me to see it but I get to see something they didn't want to share with me and it said that before my permanent contract was offered they said uh, the ladies are very comfortable or uncomfortable with Leon because he holds the door he says they have nice sunglasses he offers tea uh, and that's basically it they think he wants like sexual advances whatever which I didn't know um, was just trying to fit in and they said we all want him out of the company except for one person who thought we should give him a chance like one lady she was cool with me the other ones they wanted me out so I get to read this email while I was in the room surrounded by these people so what I do I thought I'm just uh, gonna make a decision gonna change environment because was like a blip on the radar I couldn't accept these people didn't like me for me uh, I'm just gonna try something else like that's it so I was out of the closet uh, I took a train home one time because I lived in another city was wearing a sort of pink outfit like this uh, nothing Provocative you would say, but I live in the outback of the Netherlands in the province you go through some religious towns when you take this train There were two guys who came from uh, a football match a football match I Was with my bike. Uh, I brought my bike on the train it was right next to me I was sitting next to the bike on a foldable seat in the train 
the two guys drunk that came sit next to me uh, because it's near a door it's easy accessible the guy was eating a sort of hot dog sandwich fat really bloated person uh, strong guy I couldn't do anything I was like 45 kilos I was 20 20 years old maybe started to provoke me like hey faggot uh, you fucking fag you with your pink shirt should I beat you up or what and I just ignored it I said nothing I was frightened I said nothing he started again hey you want me to beat you up want me to put you sa my sandwich now I'll, I'll, I'll mess you up and I said just stop this uh, so I walked to the conductor he was in another part of the train and I said sir I'm here with my bike I'm being harassed can you do anything please there were other people in the train they didn't do anything even though a kid I was basically a kid was being bullied by a guy four times his size the conductor came he said to the gentleman can I please see your tickets they both didn't have a ticket so they were without a valid a valid uh, reason to be on this train even and they were harassing me so I said they're calling me a, a fag can you do something I just I'm just sitting here that's all I'm doing and the guy said can you me the conductor said can I please go sit somewhere else because I'm provoking these two guys that's literally what he said even though I was sitting next to my bike so nobody would take it off the train so I had a valid travel document of course even for my bike I bought a separate ticket because you have to and he told me to piss off because I was provoking these two drunk guys especially the conductor that was afraid of them the conductor I said no I refuse I'm staying here or no I, I did move I think just a little so I moved I I gave up I just sat somewhere else the guy stopped they got off at the next station without having to pay their ticket they said like bye faggot bye they got off the train nothing nothing nobody helped me and he easily could have beaten me up if he wanted to nobody would have done a thing if he was more drunk he might have uh, so got back home decided to look for another job do something else I said I might go abroad but it's a whole other chapter I didn't want to do this thing anymore you know I was constantly being bullied about the coming out myself like I had some semi friends I was hanging out with back at the time but one was religious basically the others were close-minded one I told I was gay when I was alone with him one time he was okay but very awkward about it but that's fine I don't mind but he was friendly about it uh, at that point at least but when these friends came together there was a sort of peer pressure so then I decided to tell all of them at the same time because two they hadn't heard yet so I said uh, listen guys I'm coming out of the closet uh, I'm gay and then the one there was like an awkward silence the one friend says he was a little drunk oh well there's nothing you can change about that something like that I basically went on about our night not discussing anything about it again the other friend made a joke like oh you should be very careful for HIV I thought okay well so should you <laughs> I mean that's the thing uh, another time we were in the car with these friends and they said so you're gay does that mean you want to like do it with another man and it was like so that's all they could think about about this act like there's nothing else involved you know uh, so I didn't feel good about it either I started to be more myself because you know after 20 something years like what the fuck I might as well be me I had a sort of leather bag gentleman's bag but I wore it around my arm while we were walking in the center a bit ladylike but whatever I'm just being me I was walking like this and the friend said 
yeah, I wouldn't wear this back if I were you. It makes you look gay. Um, that was my best friend back then. We sat down in a cafe. Suddenly they got a little tipsy again. He started to say out of the blue, I don't know the context, but he said, yeah, just like pedos, Leon cannot suppress his uh, sexuality. And I thought like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I'm gay, I like men. You're straight, you like women. Why would I suggest that you like anything else? Like, this is weird. Why do you come up with this random thing? This connotation that has nothing to do with me as a person. Like, what have I done wrong to you? And something snapped inside me. It's like, I'm going to break this off. I'm going to break this off. So I had more reasons to break off the friendship. That's because the guys, I had like these three friends in this group. They were all my best friends. But I didn't feel like hanging out with me anymore. So eventually... Uh, I started to notice that I got asked out less and less, like we would go for beers. Uh, they only liked me when I was driving because I didn't drink a lot. I would always drive, then they were fine with me. I started to notice that they uh, invited me less and less. So I thought, what is wrong? And we had this WhatsApp group. Sometimes I would look in the WhatsApp group, there's no messages. But I could check their status. I could go to the individual chats with my friends and see if they were online. I was so socially anxious. I was in a bad shape that I started to check. And I saw sometimes there were all three online at the same time. And then offline at the same time. So I thought, what's this? They might be doing things without me. Um, eventually, that proved to be the case because I asked directly one of these three friends and he said, yes, you're right, sorry about it. We have a WhatsApp group that's literally called Without Leon. That's what it was literally called, where the three of them made their appointments without me. So just for the, to keep on the show, these uh, friends, they would sometimes send like memes in the group that the four of us were still in, just to like show that I was still a part of the group. But I was basically smart enough to know that I was not. So I concluded this, I asked a friend and he admitted that there was a group without Leon and they would hang out without me. Um, eventually I cut everything off. I just said, yeah, it's enough, like whatever. So. I went from my last months in the Netherlands without friends. In the university I made some acquaintances, but uh, still I think I was too mentally fractured to truly invest in these relationships because I made plenty of connections. People liked me. People did like me a lot in university because I was openly gay later on. decided to just be myself no matter what. People liked me. But I went to the parties, whatever. And eventually still decided to move abroad. So I think I've told like the worst stories. There's probably plenty more of exclusion or whatever. But I've told you a general description and atmosphere. I think that's quite sufficient. So I decided to... Not only for that reason, but I decided I've had enough of this. I'm gonna, I have no friends now. I might as well live for myself completely. So I decided to look for jobs abroad. Moved to Bulgaria. Everything was awesome. Like I'd noticed all the times when I lived abroad, whether it was in Belgium, in Romania, in France, people were fine. But it was only after coming out of the closet that people thought I was not a creep anymore. And also because during the years I started to look better. Like I remember people thought I was so ugly. 
that ah, still I was in high school before I come out of the closet, sorry for going back and forth, but I remember I had like a vest, it was a vest like this and it wrote DUDE, so D-U, D-E, it was a really nice and warm uh, vest, I was walking through high school alone, then two girls that came, they were at least five years older, more senior than I was, and they said, they saw me and they said, ew, would you like this guy to be your dude? And the other said, like, fuck no. I would, I would uh, never want anything, whatever. And that's just openly in my face because they knew I wouldn't do anything, which I didn't. Even when I was in university, I was like 21. I was on a bus, a public city bus in Utrecht like sitting on a four-seater to here, I was sitting here two adult women came across of me they were like five years older again maybe 30 they said to each other God, this guy is fucking ugly would you date him? look at these shoes and that was in my face right? can you imagine? I just got off the bus, took my train like what could I do? that's how I was treated by a lot of people without any valid reason, apart from being ugly. Like if you see me now, you might say I'm not, and even if you would, I wouldn't care. But my face has changed, eventually it started to look better, I got more, a little more buff, let's say, working out, gained my confidence, came out of the closet, and that's that. So even before coming out, people, they knew I was gay and I started to dress better, take better care of myself and they kind of sensed it. So then they were more cool with me. Like I remember working in France with Dutch girls even and they would test me like come sit on my lap, see if anything would happen. And they were very pretty girls, but they didn't do anything to me like they would basically hug me all the time, hang around with me because they gave me the chance, they thought I was funny eventually after I started to look a bit better and they had a sense I was gay, I was wearing some pink stuff, some red stuff they came sit on my lap to kind of check if it was true and they realized I was not after them because I, I was just cool with them like a friend so they realized that they were cool with me as well so eventually once I came out, grew in confidence, people changed their attitude to me. Um, basically after I came out, I moved to Bulgaria. And I've kind of always been openly gay. I've always looked like I'm going to the gym now. This is how I walk, whatever. People have always been cool because now I am me. And uh, people accept me for who I am. People like me in general. I'm not excluded anymore, although still on the outskirts of groups, I tend to be wary always. And when I came to Bulgaria, people wanted to hang out with me. I was so damaged still that I thought, wait, you want to hang out with me? This has basically never happened in my life. Are, what do you want from me? What do you want? What I've noticed afterwards is that it was only because I started to do me. I'd given up on friends. I thought, I'm gonna do me. Let's move abroad, live my life. No matter what anyone thinks, I'm doing me now. They started to notice that and tag along. But in the beginning, I would be so weirded out if people wanted to hang out with me. And I thought, I would be so much... I would have walls up around me, like a fortress. That's how much I would seclude myself still. Eventually start to open up, break down walls. But still, the thing that also helped is that I got into the dating scene, let's say the gay dating scene. And I work out every day. Uh, like you might not see it right now, but my shoulders have gotten bigger than I was. I have abs, I have more muscular arms. And when I have a picture on the apps like Tinder, Grindr, I was in 
Milan last week, I got like hundreds of messages a day. And suddenly it's the flip side because I'm myself, I'm more confident. I've dealt with the mental damage myself. That's why I can talk about it so easily. Part of it is reflection. Another part is talking about it. Last part is not giving a fuck. Because these things have only propelled me to be more awesome. I'm very strong mentally. So it's only empowered me on the long run. That's how I got through. But it wasn't easy. Not at all. That's why I can tell you the story without a lot of emotion. Because I've dealt with my dragons, let's say. I'm me now. And nobody will tell me such things in my face again. It's not that I would harm anyone that's not in me. But I do know how to stand my ground right now. I do. I go to boxing four times a week. Other days I'm in the gym. Other days I'm hiking. I know 10 languages. Not all fluent, but I do. I lived in five countries. And then the tables turned. People say, hey, who is this cool guy? I want to tag along. So that's how it shifted. And then suddenly, you're hot stuff in a dating market. And it's so strange on my mind that I still have to adapt to this new life that's basically done a complete 180 in five years just after developing myself. Like, I only started becoming a man when I went out of the shitty town, away from where I was born. Decided to close the door behind me, no matter how awesome my family is, I needed to get out of this toxicity. Because a Dutch province is not that cool, and even the big cities, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It's not for me. Abroad, I've always felt a lot better. People are actually more open-minded, I think friendlier, more receptive. High school can be toxic and so can the work environment be. But I felt a whole lot better in Bulgaria, especially since being myself openly and with pride, I would say. I'm never going back, never going back in the closet, I mean. Not for anyone. I will keep standing until my last breath. Nobody gets me down again. Let's make that let's make that thing very clear. I've become so strong after all of these things. And even without too much damage, like it messed with me. Especially the aftermath was bad because I was so unused to people chatting me up, eventually wanting to hang out with me. I've been on TV. Like what why would people want that from me? But I started to get into this new life. And now I'm me. Now I'm me and I'm not going back. Now this is who I am. But yeah, that's what I wanted to share. So what I want to say, it sounds very cheesy, but it does get better. Don't allow people to bully you. And I would say if you're a parent, don't leave your kids in an environment where they're being bullied. I got out fine, but for some people, this means the end of their lives. You wouldn't want to put your kid in a cage full of lions, would you? So think about this. You are responsible for the, at least figuring out if your kid is being bullied or not. And if so, you should take some measures, at least Find out what's going on. Pick up the signs. Like, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. But as a parent, you have a responsibility to make sure a kid is safe and gets out without damage. It's not being a snowflake. It's not being in a, a cotton-walled bedroom all day. Like, you'll get roughed up in every school a little. But 
you can't let your kid be harassed on what is it a daily basis you can't this is not good for anyone's development like nothing has been better for me than moving out of the small town environment I could never go back in and now I basically see I flipped the tables it said I wouldn't have fit it in there in the first place sometimes I look these people up on Facebook LinkedIn and I see that they're nowhere they're stuck like the time they were bullying me the time they were in the sports excelling in sports whatever the time they had their high school girlfriends and were laughing at me for being whatever that was their summit in life that was it that's when they were at their most powerful and it's gone downhill from there on and I'm only starting because I'm only just now being me I would never bully someone I would never call someone ugly I would never tread on someone's feelings like this because it can really really hurt a person your words have very strong consequences be gentle with people because you don't know if they're sailing on a very stormy sea so things do get better you can look at me I came out with 110% strength truly I'm focusing on myself my mental agility is unbreakable it truly is I have the spirit of a lion I will not let anyone bring me down never again so yeah I think that's it I'm pretty cool with this don't be concerned about me like the past is the past I'm also not using this as fuel to be negative I use it to propel myself not to wallow in misery so yeah take care I hope that was at least interesting perhaps it shows you that your expectations about the Netherlands are not always what they actually are in reality because I certainly didn't have a great time I can tell you that apart from that my youth was perfect with the parents whatever it was amazing uh, I've had a very good family but that's not all that matters because you're in a very toxic environment that's called school for most of the time and if you're slightly not good looking you'll be picked on right so I hope that's been interesting perhaps helpful uh, and take care bye bye